everyone. Uh, welcome back to my YouTube page, Stephen Kalagi. Uh, tonight I've got uh, two special guests with me. I've got Dr. Izzy Agua, Izzard Agua, sorry. Uh, he's the medical research doctor in Konyawa General Hospital. And I've got uh, Mr. Jimmy Dracori. He's the president of uh, Symbol Children's Foundation. Before I start any further, I'd like to talk about uh, CMF. It was started in 2004 by Jimmy himself. I was actually there in Kundiao, I was the hotel manager at that time, and Jimmy brought some crippled kids with him, and he brought them and had lunch, and, uh, you know, years later, it became what it is today, CMF, uh, C, sorry, SCF. Uh, Jimmy resigned in 2013 to take it on full-time. 2015, he was awarded uh, the Man of the Year Award, uh, Man of Honor Award by Diddy and 2016, uh, the world, what was it? The, the World of Children Award. The World of Children Award in New York. He was awarded that. And it was a great, great award you received. Um, apart from that, Jimmy, um, Children's, sorry, Simple Children's Foundation, uh, through their fundraising dinners, which started in 2009 uh, and annually, and uh, thanks to all the Chimbus and business houses that supported, they do three <coughs> programs that are very beneficial for the kids of Chimbu. One is Open Heart. Uh, the open heart surgery annually. Um, I'm not a doctor. I can't pronounce it really well. <laughs> How do you say this, doctor? It's uh, osteomyelitis. Osteomyelitis. It's, it's uh, something to do with uh, bone bone infections. bone infections, which doctor will touch on later on. Um, and uh, PPTCT, T, which is prevention of parent to child transmission uh, transfusion of, transmission of HIV. HIV. And that's something they've been working with. Uh, with Jimmy, very passionate about his province. Uh, doctor even called him a doctor also because he's been working very close with all the doctors. <laughs> now, uh, thank you both for joining me on uh, my YouTube channel. To watch, uh, a lot of Papua New Guineans watch this. Uh, a lot of people ask what's uh, Chimbo Children Foundation, what do you guys do every year? I know that a lot of people do know what when the ball is on and what you guys do. And uh, Recently, you guys just came back from Dubai. Uh, you received the award, um, and it's one of your programs that you do in Kundal General Hospital. Uh, briefly, Doctor, uh, before we go to you, Doctor, to talk about uh, Bond, uh, Jimmy, uh, what was this award about? Okay, uh, firstly, thank you, Steve. Um, the, the recent trip that uh, we went to Dubai, uh, I'll leave it to the Doctor to explain this one. Yeah. Uh, it's basically to do with the research uh, paper that was recently published. So, uh, Dr. Izaragu will cover this one. Uh, it's regarding the osteomyelitis research. We started in 2012. So, Dr. will touch a little bit on this one. Uh, I'll leave Dr. to touch on this one, but uh, let me just go touch a little bit on the Operation Open Heart yeah. and the PPTCT. Uh, Operation Open Heart is an annual program. Um, the specialist from Oshley Records are to promote it to do the annual Operation Open Heart in Mosby. And, uh, normally, the specialist, uh, our national cardiac specialist, goes around throughout the provinces and shortlist uh, short uh, cardiac patients that will go for the operation open heart. And once that list has been done, uh, the sad part is uh, the responsibility is given back to the parents to take the kids to Mosby. And in Chimbu, most cases, uh, the parents are village, uh, village parents, they can't afford, let's say, roughly 3,000 kina on average. Uh, to bring the kids down for accommodation and stuff like that. So that's when, if the kid doesn't come to the operation, uh, the chances are the kid will die. So that's where CF steps in, um, sponsors the parent, one parent and a kid, most me, uh, takes care of the travel expense, accommodation, and uh, we've been doing that since 2009. So, so far, we've had roughly about 60 kids saved through that program. 60 kids? 60, 60, zero. Uh, that would be. Kids, uh, basically, they're the kids that comes to Kundiao General Hospital. So that's the kids we've saved so far. And that's basically from the funding from the ball that you. That's correct. That's yeah. correct. Uh, that's through the um, annual fundraising ball that uh, we normally have for, uh, each year and the uh, Christmas ball. So you'll see the pictures coming up on the screen now. These are all the kids that uh, through uh, Symbol, uh, Symbol Children's Fund uh, that Jimmy and the foundation have helped. Uh, you'll see all the pictures popping up now. Um, what, what kind of gratified feeling do you feel after you have them? Uh, you, you know, 
what really inspires uh, uh, us to pursue this one is, uh, this, uh, especially mothers, they bring these kids uh, to the hospital and once they're told that uh, this operation is on, the sad part is they know the operation is on, but they can't bring the kid to the operation. Mm. And I mean, I'm there looking at the mother and, and the mother saw something. Uh, you feel, you know, like, what if that kid was your kid? Uh, that's where, you know, we'll do anything to, I mean, you know, Salim is like saying, you come to Australia, it would probably cost 100,000 and forget it, no parent in the village will afford this one. And for, you know, for the same service, uh, for 3,000 kina, uh, you know, that's, that's the reason why it's our signature program. You know, how many kids that also used to come to Mosby, we we'll go to sponsor all these kids to come to Mosby. So, um, basically, it's a satisfying feeling. And most times, uh, what we see from our mothers is like, oh, by that talk, they go, you look like what I put on that. And that is more deep. That's, a reward. Uh, that's the real reward. And that drives you to, you know, go out there, do, you know, whatever you can do to save more kids. And I think that's, that's something that Bangladesh personally and, and really, Bangladesh, that, that bond is really strong. And um, with the, uh, I think I'll, we'll, we don't have much time, so we'll, I'll touch on the, uh, the osteo research. Osteo research. <laughs> you're, you're a better doctor. <laughs> he's, he's but, a better doctor. doctor, the research, how did it start and how did uh, Jimmy come into funding this program and how you guys got published? And now I think it's a big honor to be uh, in the International Journal of uh, Pediatrics, 85% uh, uh, what rejection rate. Uh, maybe not many le learned people or doc would know what that means, but if you can please touch on uh, the research and the work you've, you and uh, Jim have uh, been doing and what happened. Yeah, okay. Uh, thank you, Stephen, for the opportunity to meet and uh, discuss like that. So the research was actually, like uh, Jimmy has said, one of the many programs that uh, SCF has actually initiated and rolled out at our hospital. And that came about after an observation that a lot of children, young children from our communities, especially between the age of 12, 13, 9, were coming into the hospital with lots of bone infection. Mm -hmm. So that actually stimulated the idea that, and Jimmy was the one who actually came up with the idea, ironically a non-medical person to come up with the idea to actually you know, initiate research into the area of bone infection to see what exactly was wrong or what was exactly the cause of this uh, high prevalence of bone infections amongst our children because by contrast it was not very common in the coastal areas as opposed to our uh, central islands region. So that was why he actually initiated the idea, it was his idea and then he actually not only had the idea but we went ahead to fund it. When you say bone infections, is it like ulcers or is it bo the bones in death or if you can explain for the non-doctors? Oh, okay, so bone infection basically means that uh, a bacteria actually goes through via the blood yeah. a circulation and then it gets uh, deposited in the bone, um, the part, of the, part of the bone known as the cortex or even uh, within the marrow, but usually in the bone, the art part of the bone, okay. and then that's where it sits there and then starts uh, infecting the bone and then starts the, uh, the, uh, causes the bone to become uh, brittle and then over time it becomes uh, eroded, eaten up okay. and then sometimes in the later stages of the disease when you get an X-ray of the bone it basically disappears so there's no bone left no, and that predisposes to you know small children they cannot be grounded, they are mobile, they are up and about all the time and whenever they expose themselves to some you know fun activities like jumping they easily break the bones so how many cases have you seen in Kondia alone? Oh. So from our hospital data between 2019 and 2012, the data that we got has actually showed a high incidence of uh, osteomyelitis cases. So on average, from like a week, you would have between up to three to five cases of pediatric or bone infection in children being admitted to the ward. Okay. And of course, you know the fact that we have geographical um, um, obstacles or challenges to presenting the hospital, they come late and then they come in with all these complications. You know, my patient with broken bone, diseased bone, bone that's uh, disappeared and not there. So, 
the research was initiated in 2012, and then data was collected between that time to 2017. Okay. So because at Kenya Hospital, we did not have the facility to actually do what is known as microbiology, mm -hmm. to culture the bacteria and find out which organism is causing the bone disease. We had to partner with PNG IMR. So the samples were coming from Kunyawa and then they were sent down to PNG Institute of Medical Research. Mm -hmm. And that's where they provided that uh, laboratory support for us, and then they gave us the results. So the results were interesting in that they actually demonstrated one particular organism which was predominantly causing bone infection in our children. And that organism is known as Staphylococcus aureus. But the interesting thing about that organism is that it has been shown through this lab test that it, is resi it was resistant to all the common antibiotics that we were using, like amoxicillin, fluoxacillin, um, and the others. It was what, helping it? It was, the bacteria was resistant to okay. these antibiotics, meaning that these antibiotics basically were not effective mm -hmm. or working in terms of killing the bacteria. So it was surviving and progressing. Okay. So every time the children come to the hospital with bone infection, they were diagnosed given these antibiotics, they were not working. So basically the disease was just pro yeah. progressing without uh, impedance. Yeah. So, and then that's, that was the interesting finding okay. that was discovered. So, so on the basis of that result at the Kunia Hospital in our medical, in our surgical ward and the pediatric ward where we have the children with bone infection, we start um, coming up with a new regime. And there were other drugs that the bacteria was sensitive to, meaning that it was prone to. So these drugs, uh, that they particularly uh, from the lab tests showed that these drugs were able to kill the bacteria. So those drugs that were able to kill the bacteria, there was uh, a number of them. So we decided at the Kondeo Hospital to use those drugs to actually treat for uh, bone infection. And that actually progressively has shown some good results. But in terms of uh, how much, uh, exactly how much it has done in terms of improving the treatment, probably we'll need to do another follow-up study to actually uh, scientifically ascertain that. Okay. So, but uh, so far progressively, the new antibiotic that uh, we are using as a result of that research is, has proven to be of uh, great help. Great help. So, um, when did you publish your findings? Yes, so um, the data was there. We started writing it up in 2017. I think uh, at around uh, January, February. So we did the draft and then we sent it to a number of journals. But um, the one that actually accepted and published it was the International Journal of Pediatrics. So we submitted our manuscript in um, April, and they published it uh, on, on the 22nd of May, 2017. And uh, the paper is actually available online. Okay. So the paper at, uh, at the International Journal of Pediatrics. International Journal of Pediatrics. So if you if you're out there, you can search the research on online. Yeah. Yes. And and um, a few months after, the paper actually uh, attracted a lot of uh, international research attention and attention from our the clinicians and doctors all around the world. So um, they have given us a number of uh, invites to go and do presentation. So present the results for our study and how it was done and all that to the rest of the world. So the wow. first first one... From Kondiawa to the world. From Kondiawa mm -hmm. to the world. So the first one of which we have uh, just returned from is the one in Dubai. So we attended the international. So they're looking at the pictures right now. Yes. Uh, where are the pictures? Uh, where are you guys at now? Uh, these pictures that were they're looking at. So those some of these pictures that uh, they're looking at uh, from the conference in Dubai. Dubai. That was uh, just last week. Just last week. Okay. And uh, the conference is called the World Congress on Pediatrics. And that's where it's a um, global stage where doctors and researchers, uh, academics. Professors from all around the world, they come to present their papers and research work on new findings that will uh, impact, guide, and inform uh, treatment, decisions, treatment decisions that will uh, contribute to improving overall uh, quality of healthcare for our community. And we, we were proud to be uh, part of it and uh, telling them our story from our side of the world. Wow, that's awesome. I mean, that's Thank great. You. I mean, Jimmy, you guys, you guys put, uh, put your heart and soul into it and like the world uh, recognizing your effort and that's got to encourage a lot of uh, young people out there to, you know, you don't have to be a 
politician or rock star or whatever you, you can influence where you are, where God gives you the talent and you can uh, have an impact on Papua New Guinea. And you two went to the world stage and uh, we're recognizing that's a big accolade to you guys. Um, uh, is there anything else you want to add on, on, on that research? Uh, uh, you, you, would you guys like to thank anyone who's helped you guys along the way to get your papers published? Yes, uh, so we actually uh, would like to acknowledge the contribution of uh, certain parties who have actually contributed to the uh, making of this paper. I think, uh, first of all, uh, Mr. Jimmy Dekora himself was, is the president of Simbi Children Foundation and he was the initiator of that uh, study and also uh, he was the one who single-endedly funded it. pushing it from the yes. back. <laughs> and um, <coughs> and uh, also our um, research partner, uh, PNG Institute of Medical Research, uh, for providing us leverage support, which we did not have at our hospital. And we also would like to extend our uh, acknowledgement to the doctors who were there for the initial part of the research and those who contributed during their time at the hospital. Uh, Kundiao so, General. Kundiao General Hospital. Um, mm. I think uh, Dr. Um, uh, Asola and Dr. Muwas, those were the two uh, surgical doctors who initially participated in the study and uh, participated in the data collection. Also, uh, Father Jan Jowaski mm -hmm. and his hard-working team at Kundiawa. Mm -hmm. He's the bone doctor. Yeah, he's the bone doctor. <laughs> and uh, Dr. Urakoko and the rest of the team at Kundiawa, Kundiawa General Hospital, and um, of course, lastly, but not the least, uh, the patients themselves and their guardians who actually were very supportive and consented to the study and uh, without whom this study would not have been a success. No. So, thank you. Uh, Jimmy, you got any ones? Um, thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll say, that's the first part of the research. Uh, we've got second part of the research to come and that is to break the, the step orders and find out the DNA makeup of it. And once we've been do that, uh, we want to make uh, Kundiawa the, the hub of the CEO around the world. No. So that's yet to come. Uh, I believe you will do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, thank you. That's all we have time for. But um, Simple Children's Foundation uh, annual event, they have a ball. And uh, please get behind uh, Jimmy and his team. They do a lot of great work. Uh, we haven't even touched on uh, parent-to-child transmission of HIV. It's another good program they're doing in in um, in Chumbu, where they uh, doctor and his team they try to uh, doctor is right uh, not pass the HIV virus to the kid before they are born. So that's another big topic that we can talk about. Uh, pro we'll probably touch on that on another interview. I'll sit down with Doctor and Kuniawa, and we'll probably have a coffee and uh, we'll talk talk about that. But Doctor and uh, Jimmy are doing great work in Cebu. Uh, get behind uh, Cebu Children's Fund. Uh, fund. They, they actually do a lot of great work. Uh, Jimmy's been awarded a couple of awards. I'm sure Doctor will be awarded soon for his hard uh, his work. And as I said, uh, no matter where you are, engineer, doctor, wherever you are uh, in Papua New Guinea, don't complain. Don't uh, sit wait around the bush. Uh, do what you can do to impact your area, and uh, we all can change PNG. I mean, these two fine gentlemen, they, they just came back from Dubai from the research and the hard work they put in place, and I think we're all proud of them. The clip you will see, uh, the pictures of them in Dubai, you can see right now, and uh, now they're back here on the layover in Brisbane, and they'll be heading back to Chimbu and, uh, by next week. So uh, we thank you very much for the, uh, your time, gentlemen. I know you're tired, and any comment, please put your comments down. I'm sure Jimmy and uh, Dr. Agua will be happy to see your comments and reply uh, on my page. Thank you very much. If you like it, please subscribe, like, and your comments below. Uh, I'm sure we'll do that.